as we begin, remember, we're, we're all talking about God said it. Uh, we, we, God has spoken. Uh, God spoke all of creation into existence. Uh, God said, let there be light. Boom, light. Here you go. God, God created it all by the power of his word. Then we, we know that we have God's written word. This is the word of God. Not that it contains the word of God. It is the word of God. Okay, Genesis to Revelation, God didn't appoint me editor or you. So you don't get to throw out the parts you don't like, all right? It's the Word of God. Third thing is the living Word of God, all the way from, from pre-time, I mean eternal. Christ is the living Word of God and, and came uh, incarnate on this earth and lived and died and was resurrected and is alive right now. So God has spoken. God has said it. God has said everything that needs to be said regarding uh, the revelation of himself to us, okay? All right, so I want you to know that because as we make our way through the Bible in 2022, Genesis to Revelation in, in the 52 weeks of the year, we, we start with creation, then the fall, then sin, then sin rampant. You've got the couple, Abraham and Sarah, you got the covenant, you got family, you got the people, you got the nation, okay? The nation appoints a king. The king, now you've got the, the pointing to the king of kings, the savior, and then the body of Christ. And so this is the story arc of God's redemption of all that he said at creation, all right? So now we're in 2 Kings 10, and I don't like it a bit. I just want y'all to know, I, I, I'm sort of distressed at where we are because these kings more or less are just all corrupt. Every now and then you get a glimmer of hope. Every now and then you get a glimpse of a king who wants to do the right thing. But by and large, the kings are taking the nation and God's people down. All right? That's where we are. So we are in 2 Kings chapter 10, verses 28 to 36. Pray with me before we read it together. God, this morning, we just want to hear from you. God, it's your word. And God, we want to hear as you speak to us through your word. God, shine the light on it that we might understand uh, those things that took place hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, and the things we need to understand about them today so that we don't walk the same path, so that we won't step in the same hole, so that we don't wander in the same ditches that people have done in times past, that we might keep our eyes focused on you, that we might understand the caution that we see in the story of your people, that we see in the 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 account of the kings and the people as they wandered uh, from your presence. And God, we just want to give you thanks this morning. Indeed, God, it's the resurrection. God, that we know we have victory. And we thank you that indeed our, our, our lives began. And so we praise, praise you in that. And we just pray this morning that we'd hear from you now. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 10. You ready? Here we go. Verse 28. Jehu eliminated Baal worship from Israel. Yay! Right? Jehu eliminated Baal worship from Israel. That's got to be a good thing. Right? I mean, we should all say, Woo! Yay, Jehu! Right? <laughs> but... And remember, I've told you before, I, remember what, I forget what wise individual said. Anytime you put but in the middle of a sentence, you just erase everything you said before it. But he did not turn away from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had caused Israel to commit, worshiping the gold calves that were in Bethel and Dan. I think last week I said Beersheba. The idea of Bethel and Dan were north and south for the, for the kingdom of Israel. Nevertheless, the Lord said to Jehu, because you have done well in carrying out what is right in my sight and have done to the house of Ahab all that was in my heart. Y'all know what he did to the house of Ahab? <laughs> he killed them all. Uh, if you study these kings, man, they just wipe out the family in front of them because they don't want any threat. They don't want any challenge. They don't want any competition. <clears throat> but this was what God had said about Ahab and particularly his wife Jezebel and the dogs ate him. Just so you know. If you go back and read the chapters, you'll find it. Four generations of your son will sit on the throne. So what he's saying is, Jehu, four sons down the line will be king in Israel. Yet Jehu was not careful 
to follow the instruction of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. He did not turn from the sins that Jeroboam had caused Israel to commit. In those days, the Lord began to reduce the size of Israel. Hazael defeated the Israelites throughout their territory. From the Jordan eastward, the whole land of Gilead, the Gadites, the Reubenites, the Manassites, from Aroer, which is by the Arnon Valley through Gilead to Bashan. The rest of the events of Jehu's reign, along with all his accomplishments and all his might, are written in the historical record of Israel's kings. Jehu rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria. His son Jehoahaz became king in his place. The length of Jehu's reign over Israel in Samaria was 28 years. Now, you know, we read these accounts, and, 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 and we're getting sort of the synopsis view. I remember in my house on the bookshelves when I was growing up were the Reader's Digest editions of some books, right? It was the shortened version. It just sort of gave you the point. Well, that's what we're hearing here. Think about 28 years that Jehu reigned. 28 years is a pretty long time, right? I mean, think about it. We're in fast food culture now. Right? We're instant coffee. We're, we're all those kind of things, right? It, think, it got to be now. You know, you remember, uh, I forget what commercial it was with Quick Carl. Got to do everything fast. Remember that? Uh, see, see, we're, we're in this, this, this speed mode. 28 years is a long time. So, so we start with this account in verse 28, which just simply says, Jehu eliminated Baal worship from Israel. So, so I titled the message today, Bye Bye Baal. Right? It's not bye-bye baby, it's bye-bye bail. So, so Jehu takes the throne and he immediately does something that he understands and knows to be the right thing to do. See, the people understand it is a part of their national identity, right? That Yahweh is God. Yahweh is Lord. That, that, that Yahweh is, is, is their uh, worship focus. Okay? So, so here you go. Uh, what he did was the right thing. The, the word Baal is it, it, kind of an all-inclusive term. In the ancient Semitic languages, it just means Lord. And so in, in the Canaanite culture, they viewed it as a, a, a fertility god. And, and really the God of rain and dew. Why? Because rain and dew feed plants which allow us to eat and live, right? So, so in the Canaanite culture, Baal was this God of, 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 of fertility, of food, agriculture, that kind of thing. But it's also sort of this transition from Babylonian Baal, which was this God of triumph, war, and victory, Right, so you've got this 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 sort of underlying idolatrous. Now I'm going to use the word before I explain it. This underlying worship of creation. This underlying view that that because we are so dependent on rivers or rain or sun or dirt or plants or victory over our neighbors or, or might or strength or whatever. We're going to worship the things that we're dependent on because we can't see God. We don't realize that we are dependent on God, so we're going to worship the things we can reach out and touch. Right? This idea of... Now, that, now the truth is, is that in the northern kingdom of Israel, which is where Jehu is... Uh, that this was just just multiplied. It was amplified through Ahab and a particularly Ahab's wife Jezebel. Okay, that, the names mean stuff, right? So she's the one that just just caused the the Baal worship in Israel to proliferate. And so so at her passing and and getting eaten up by the dogs, uh, uh, Jehu comes in and says, that's wrong. We're going to do away with it. So he he, he stops all Baal worship in, in Israel. However, Israel's sort of spiritual worship identities corrupt from the beginning. 
All right, so Rehoboam, remember I talked about this last week, if you were able to be here for Easter or saw it some other way. Oh, by the way, welcome. Glad you guys are online. Um, she, Angie might be watching, so I better behave, right? Okay, anyway, my sister's always watching, and she's, she's used to me not behaving. Uh, anyway, uh, but, but, but when Rehoboam caused this oppressive rulership, over the, the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel, 10 of them said, fine, we're done with David's house. We're going north. So the, the kingdom, the northern kingdom of Israel was formed under the rule of Jeroboam. Jeroboam didn't want his people going south to worship at the temple. So he set up two temples at Dan and Bethel, Bethel being the house of God, which is what it means. Uh, this, this, this idea that 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 our people will worship at these two places, but it's not the ark. It's not the presence of God. It's not the place that God established his name among his people. So what did Jeroboam do? Jeroboam hearkened back to a historical event in, in, in the people's history. He went all the way back to Egypt and the, the rule of the, the bull and the cow thing. And then they came out of Egypt and in the wilderness they, they, they erect a calf. And, and, and God's not happy about that either. And so, so Jeroboam sets up two calves in Dan and Bethel to, for, for the people to come and worship. So, Why? Why are the people willing to worship cows? Why are the people willing to say, okay, yeah, we, we know that we've been called to worship at Jerusalem. We know that as a nation and as a people, we, we're supposed to go to the presence of God for worship. We're supposed to bring our sacrificial gifts to Jerusalem, to the temple, to the ark, to the, to the altar, to the, all of that stuff. So we know that, that that's our identity. That's how we worship God. That's how we fulfill the, the, the statement of God in his word that I will be their God. They will be my people. I will be with them. Right? But out of convenience, out of, you know, running from the oppression of Rehoboam, it's just easier to worship where we live. It's just easier to worship, you know, the cows. Yeah, you know, they're not, they're not, we know the cows aren't alive. Well, we know the cows aren't real. We just go to the temple because, because, you know, the cows represent this image of God. Now, if you go study the, the Semitic and the Ugaritic texts that reveal the whole calf tradition and all these kind of things, if you go study that stuff, if, if you geek out on that stuff, man, jump online and do it, all right? But as I was looking at this, I thought, well, what about the cows? I mean, it says very clearly, he did not turn away from the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had caused Israel to commit. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about the establishment of, of these altars of worship in Dan and Bethel, these cows. The cows aren't real. I mean, they're real gold. But they're not gods. There are no gods. All the things, the idols that people worship, the Bible even tells us, they're not gods at all. They're just things. They're just created images. Right? Now, all right, be perceptive because you know where we're going. This is not a word for Israel hundreds of years ago. This is a word for God's people today. All right? What about the cows? Man, what about the cows? The, the cows simply for Jeroboam and the nation of Israel provided a substitute for worship. What are we going to worship, y'all? Well, wait a minute. What, what is worship? So, if you go look at the word idolatry okay because y'all have heard me very subtly and very cryptically say there's an awful lot of idolatry in our culture today what does that mean that means people are worshiping all kinds of things 
What does idolatry mean? You know, it doesn't even appear until they, they actually find some of, the, some of the ancient tablets and things that, that they scribbled on back then or actually chiseled on or whatever. But if you go back into the, the Hebrew roots of this thing, what the Hebrew people understood that we translate idolatry was simply this understanding of strange worship. Strange worship. That's the way the Hebrew understood it. Well, wait a minute. We're supposed to gather before the, the glory of God. But we're going to set these calves up, these cows or, or this river or the sunshine. And that, that's going to be the substitute for the image and the presence of God. You see? People are all about setting up substitutes to worship. Okay, images, man, the church, and I'll use that word intentionally for a brief moment. The church has had wars over the images of God, right? All right, so do you know that the first calf out in the wilderness in the Exodus was created before the first commandment was given? What's the first commandment? Worship no God's. No gods before me. Worship no gods before me. Right? That's the number one one. Uh, don't create any image. Right? The church has fought over this. And I just... I can't go there yet. Why did they accept the substitute? Why? It's convenient. We don't have to go all the way back to Jerusalem. Uh, we don't have to intermingle with that, 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 that southern kingdom at all. We can stay in our own place. It's convenient to go to Dan and to Bethel and, and to just, just, you know, just worship the way we worship the cows, right? And besides, here you go, you ready? The king says it's okay. The king says it's okay to worship the cows. All right, now y'all know where I'm going, don't you? <laughs> we live in a culture where we allow the culture to tell us what's okay to worship. Oh, man. We can, we can, we can worship uh, the concept. Now, I'm not going to... Look, God created the family. He defined it. Dare I define it for you? Yeah, okay. Go all the way back. Mom, dad, kids. That's what God said. Don't argue with me about it. I'm just telling you that's what God said, all right? It's the building block of civilization, culture, and society. And when you tear that down, you tear down civilization, culture, and society. Okay? But we can worship this this concept of family and then we can change the concept to be anything we want it to be and then we can worship that why because the king says it's okay All right i'm just I, king says it's okay what else the king says is okay to worship i just want y'all to think about it i'm not i'm gonna make a list for you our culture says it's okay Right? To worship agendas. Our culture says it's okay to worship ideologies. Right? Uh, we can worship the rivers. We, we, we can worship the dew. We can worship the sun. We can worship the ocean. We can worship the sand. We can worship the turtles. We can worship the whales. Why? Because the king says it's okay. Not my king, but the king says it's okay. Folks, it's, idea it's idolatry. It's strange worship. Let's take it a little farther. For, for Christians, all right, good old Christian folks. What, what, what's some of our idolatry? 
Do you know, some Christians worship the Bible. Now, everybody in the room is going, well, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Thanks for shaking your head. It's not okay. We worship God and God alone. We love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, God has chosen to reveal himself in his word, which means you don't get to throw parts out. But we don't worship the Bible. Okay? We don't worship this building. We don't worship pointed buildings with white steeples. Of course, Florence threw ours in the yard. We don't worship buildings. We, we, we don't worship uh, uh, the, 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 the construct that the building represents. Okay? What do I mean by that? Well, that's my church. How many of you heard that before? That's my church. Man, there's a group out there in the world right now. They, they make yard signs now that say, I love my church. I, I want to ask you, I say, what is that? I mean, because if church are the called out ones of Christ, the body of Christ, then I'm your church. Right? Man, every time I see one of those, I, I don't want to run over it, but I do cringe. I love my church. That, that this construct that people want to worship a, a thing. Why? Because some king said it was okay. I'm going to tell y'all a story. This is going to hurt some of y'all's feelings. But I'm okay with that, and y'all know it. When I first came here, there, the, 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 the building was not quite as well maintained as, as we get to enjoy it today. Right, and I don't think I'm hurting anybody's feelings by saying that. I mean, we we it didn't rain in here. But I came in and 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 it was like, you know what? We 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 need a, a projector. We need a screen. We need da 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 da. So so we hung projectors. You see these holes in the ceiling? That's where the projectors used to be. Now we have televisions. But we put a great big old screen up here and it would come down and then we'd raise it back up and it would come down and we'd raise it back up and and then the motor broke and so it stayed down all the time. Everybody remember the screen? Many of you probably remember the screen. It came down and it went up no more. Uh, I'm not... Anybody know where I'm going? Just checking. I can't even begin to tell you how many people got upset with me that during worship they couldn't see that wooden cross back there. Can I tell y'all something? I don't worship that either. Now, the cross does represent the sacrifice that God made in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of my sins. But I don't worship the cross. Okay? I, I, I'm just telling you. There, there, there is a slide of idolatry, of strange worship that the body of Christ has to be really careful about. You know, there, there, there's some groups in the body of Christ that worship systems. Systems of worship style, systems of theology, schools of thought, in time ideas. We worship God. The concept of worshiping God is to declare the worth of God in your life. I'm not saying the cross and the representation of, of the death of Jesus is wrong. I'm not saying it's not a great reminder of what God did on our behalf. I'm not, I mean, I got one around my neck. I had one guy come up to me and say to me one time, he said, you know, wearing a cross around your neck, you might as well, well you might as well, be wearing an electric chair around your neck. The cross in the first century was simply a means of torture and death. See, the body of Christ 
has come to revere it as, as the representation of Christ's death. Okay? Now, I, I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, if it was bad, I'd be like Jehu. I'd tear it down. But be careful, folks, as the body of Christ, that we're not engaging in strange worship of things. Now, yeah, within, be careful. With, here you go. I'm going to tell you the one. Don't worship. And, and <sighs> Folks, I love the gathering with all my heart. Man, God has done an, a, a very cool thing. You know, we went out last Sunday to baptize five people on Easter Sunday. Do you know we ended up baptizing nine? Because four people just showed up and said, I want to get baptized. Well, guess what? Baptism is that obedient step of faith when Christ becomes Savior and Lord of who you are. You see? And then you obey and, and, and you tell the world, I'm a believer. I follow Jesus. And so, yeah, I had a Jesus conversation with these four people. And, and since I was, I'd already baptized, you know, five, cold wasn't affecting me anymore. We went ahead and baptized the other four. So, so, so be careful. Because some people worship the act of baptism. Some people worship leadership within the body. You know, you can point Saint so and so and Saint this, or dare I even say it, Pastor so and so. I know people who worship pastors. Now, they wouldn't tell you I worship my pastor, but to hear him talk, man, to hear him talk, sometimes pastors have done more than Jesus did. Folks, I'm just running the gamut on idolatry right now. Strange worship. Beware. Beware, okay? Because the down we go <laughs> is kind of bottomless. You know what happened to Jehu in the northern kingdom of Israel? They got wiped out by Assyria. You know what happened to Judah in the southern kingdom of Judah? Got wiped out by Babylon. Folks, get along with God. We had this conversation right out here in the hallway. Make sure that your worship is all about, and I'm going to use verbiage from my generation, make sure it's all about just hanging out with God. Being in the presence of God. Okay? Folks, it has troubled me for quite a while. The imagery, and I don't mean just crosses and steeples and stuff, but people are likely to worship all kinds of things. Things from culture. Some people worship politics. Some people worship conservative, liberal ideologies. So, some people find their identity in that. Uh, some people worship um, um, uh, this, this, this... I'm going to say liberty for a minute. Because in our culture, what's going on is, is I'm free to do anything I want to do. I can be anything I want to be. You know, I, I've said this before. You know, I, I came through in the 70s when, 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 you know, adults were telling us, oh, you can grow up and be anything you want to be. No. That's not a truth. Now, you can work real hard. You can achieve some things, but I'll be honest with you. I, I knew at four foot eight, I was never playing in the NBA. Never. And then everybody always brings up, well, what about Spud Webb? Well, hey, one in a million, right? Here you go. Liberty, the freedom to do and act any way you want to. Don't worship that. We just hang out in the presence of God and let our identity, like the Israelite people, let our identity come from who God is, not who the culture 
says we are. Not who the church culture says we are. Okay? Hang out with God. He's revealed himself to us. Don't miss it. Okay. That cross represents the death of Jesus. And he died for every one of us. If you don't know him, you need to know him. Okay? Pray with me. God, thank you for today. Thank you, God, that (laughs) you have reached out and loved us. God, help us to love you back. God, help us to live our worship. Not, Not the constructs of our understanding. Because, God, you are infinite. So, God, help us to, 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 uh, to listen and to understand the things that you've shown us. And help us to obey. Help us to follow. God, help us to be your people. And you be our God. God, help us to learn the errors that were made throughout your word. God, help us to recognize strange worship and help us to fix our eyes on Jesus who has authored and finished our faith. Thank you for your love, God. Help us to love you back. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.